I'll show you this here, but the part that tested positive for it was actually the frets. And think about this, this is potentially a really big problem because the frets is a piece of the guitar that you touch constantly while you're playing. Hey friends, welcome back to the Guitar Max channel and today I want to talk about a very serious topic and that is the potential of lead exposure from guitars. Now right at the beginning here I want to tell you what I'm not talking about and I'm not talking about the lead that is in solder in the electrical connections in guitars. I've actually got some lead based solder right here. This solder is 40% lead and I'm actually using this to test that my lead test kit works and it does. Now there is lead free solder but a lot of solder still uses lead but look when you have the electrical connections inside of a guitar like that there's not much potential for the guitarist to actually be exposed to that. So unless you are a luthier that's doing a lot of electronics work on a guitar the average guitar player is not really a problem for them. What I am talking about in this video is lead being used in places on a guitar where the guitarist is actually going to come into contact with it on a regular basis and I'm not just talking about the paint. So over the years I've reviewed a lot of different guitars and a comment that I often see a lot of the times when I'm reviewing like a Chinese made guitar I get a comment like hey watch out I bet they're using lead based paint for this. So after a long time of getting these comments I thought hey I should just make a video basically debunking this because of course you know these days you're not going to find a guitar with lead in it. But surprise surprise it turned out that I owned three guitars that tested positive for lead. Now the way this testing kit works it has these swabs and inside the swab is a chemical called sodium rhodazinate. Now that chemical reacts to lead and it will actually change color. So it'll change from this sort of dark yellow color to a red kind of red purple color in the presence of lead. And depending on how much lead there is the color gets darker. So like I said I went around all my guitars and you know testing 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 and yeah I found some guitars that tested positive but they tested positive in places that I was not expecting. So in this video I'm going to show you how I do the testing and what the results were the three that tested positive so you guys can watch out for this yourself. Now real quick guys we'll get right into this but of course if you enjoy videos like this staying up on all the latest news in the guitar universe and you have not already subscribed for some reason please consider subscribing right now. Okay so to start with I tested the lead based solder just to verify that this test kit was actually working. And just to show you how this works you uh, dip the test swab in water and I'll just put one down here as my control so you can see that and it's kind of a kind of a dark yellow color. And then the one if you suspect there's lead you know again you dip it in water and you just rub it on in this case the metal of the solder. And this process doesn't take too long. You're not supposed to go more than 30 seconds here but you can see I'll set this down next to the control and you can see the color that it changed here. It changes to this sort of like uh, reddish color. And also guys I should mention if you were handling items that you suspect have lead in them you probably want to be wearing some gloves or you know some kind of safety equipment to to keep you protected okay. Anyway you can see the result there and so this verifies two things. One that this does actually have lead and two that the test kit works. So that's kind of the positive result that we're looking for when we're testing this other stuff. Now let's start with the guitars that actually tested positive. The first one that tested positive was a vintage guitar and it's actually this Tysco, a Tiesco that I have right here. This is a guitar that was made in the mid to late 60s in Japan and the uh, I'll show you this here but the part that tested positive for it was actually the frets. And think about this this is potentially a really big problem because the frets is a piece of the guitar that you touch constantly while you're playing. And look this guitar was manufactured close to 60 years ago when there was much less if any regulation in terms of using toxic metals in manufacturing. So I can't say that I'm totally surprised but when everybody was expecting the paint 
to have lead in it. It was actually the frets that tested positive. And I did test the paint too, but that was negative. I think probably what was going on is that they were using lead as filler for the fret wire material. And, you know, these are pretty chintzy frets. Um, they didn't hold up very well because, as you can imagine, with the lead in there, it's kind of a softer metal. And also, judging by how dark the color is here, it's a significant amount of lead. Okay, now the next guitar that tested positive was this Chibson Les Paul Custom. And just to be super clear, I said Chibson, not Gibson. This is not a real Gibson Les Paul. It's a knockoff made in China. And geez, if you needed just one more reason to not buy these Chibson guitars, now you've got it. And like the uh, vintage guitar, this one also tested positive on the fret wire. Now, guys, to be totally crystal clear, there were many, many other Chinese-made guitars that I tested that tested negative. I mean, really all the others except the guitars you see in this video tested negative. And that includes like the Eerton Latitude guitars and all the Firefly stuff. I tested all of that stuff. It was all negative. I think the deal with this is that this guitar, I mean, it's a Chibson knockoff. There's already, you know, a lack of regulation in terms of the intellectual property laws with the manufacturing of this guitar. So I think it's, it's the combination of it being cheap and also being built in a way where they're just not really concerned with any kind of regulation. And I tested the paint as well on this and the plastic, everything else on the guitar. It was the fret wire only that tested positive. Okay, so I've got one more guitar to show you that tested positive, but unlike those last two, it was not the fret wire. And this is the third one right here that did test positive. And no, it's not a real Ibanez. This is another knockoff guitar. It's the, uh, the knockoff of the Ibanez Gem. And this one tested positive on the plastic of the pickup bobbins. And I think what's going on with this one is because this is white plastic here, I think what they did is they added lead oxide as a, to the plastic uh, as a white pigment in order to get the color. Using lead oxide as a pigment uh, in paint used to be a really big, uh, you know, used to be very common and it was a big problem. So they really cracked down and like, we're not gonna use it anymore. And that's how you got all the lead paint problems. But that was decades ago in most cases. So to have a guitar like this that was made in just the last few years, uh, you know, have this problem, it really surprises and concerns me. And with this testing positive for the plastic of the pickup bobbin, uh, it's not quite as big of a deal as the fret wire because, you know, even if you're resting your hand there, you're probably not constantly touching that part of the guitar like you are with the frets. But I think finding any amount of lead on a modern guitar like this is still pretty worrisome. And you can see the test result down here. Okay, now there's something else I want to mention with all of this. Do you guys know that alcohol on your skin increases the absorption of things outside of your skin into you? It's true, and maybe you're thinking, well, that's no problem. I just won't spill any alcohol on my hands and you know, then I've got nothing to worry about. But the issue is, uh, if you drink alcohol, if you drink a decent amount of it, you sweat out alcohol and then it sits on your skin. You guys are probably familiar with the lovely scent of beer sweat. So you drink alcohol, you sweat it out, and then it's on your skin. And then you go and you grab something that has a potentially uh, toxic chemical, or in this case, element, it just makes everything worse because whatever you're touching, will it'll be much easier absorbed through your skin because of the presence of alcohol. It'll also corrode your strings and make the strings wear out a lot faster. So if that's something that you're concerned about, wash your hands before you play guitar. Okay guys, so this video took me a while to do. I've got over 70 guitars. I tested everything. These were the ones that tested positive. And I hope this has been helpful for you. Everybody always expects or suspects the paint, but in all of the guitars that I tested and the three that tested positive, it was never the paint. It was the fret wire and in one case, plastic. Okay guys, please let me know what you thought of this video down in the comments section below. I'm gonna put a link if you wanna get this uh, lead testing kit, you can get this off of Amazon. It's not very expensive and it's pretty easy to use. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll talk to you very soon.